Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Friday night in the shop. We made it through another week. I want to stop right here and say, Iron Man, thank you for your support, buddy. I really appreciate it. Uh, Iron Man did a super thanks on the last video. I really appreciate that. Every little bit helps, friends. You guys 100% support and keep this channel rolling. Without you guys watching the videos and supporting the channel, it would be really hard uh, to make stuff like this happen. So again, I got to take this time to thank you guys and thank you Iron Man. I really appreciate your support, buddy. Okay, today's video, this video is a follow-up of the last one. Um, a lot of people were interested in the last video. I know this is on a 372, but you can take this information and put it into any saw. There's a lot of saws that you can't get a piston for. This is the ins and outs of what you got to do. And then you got to figure out you got to figure out at some point what you can get away with, okay? Now, the main thing, and I got I got a couple of emails and quite a few comments and questions about, well, what's wrong? What's wrong with the numbers on the last piston that you decked? Why? What's wrong with that? I've seen other guys use those numbers. 100% friends. Um, the main number I did not like in the last piston and cylinder combo with the shorter base gasket, wherever I put that, right here, with this 20 valve base gasket. Every cylinder that I have, um, most of these highway cylinders I have are newer ones. I have a few older ones. The timing numbers are a little bit different. Um, I timed as many of them as I could just to check them out and see where they're at. Well, they're all timing about 162 to 160 total intake duration. That's not a number that I'm happy with, and I thought it might work. I could throw the saw together. But if the main thing in porting, if if you don't like the numbers you're starting with, you're you're already you've lost the game. To me. Um starting with good numbers that are close to what you want, uh, so that you do less grinding. Remember, the more grinding you do, especially on the exhaust and intake, um, the more you're opening up the ports and making bigger ports. Now, contrary to a lot, what a lot of people would believe, um, larger ports don't necessarily flow more air, okay? Um, it's This is all a timed event, and one thing to me, a larger intake port is not really a good deal to me. Now, the nice thing is, this intake port was stock at, say, 161, but... The problem is with longer intake timing, and I, I won't rattle on about this for too long, but uh, an over intake saw, yeah, it'll it'll start and run, but it won't idle very well usually. Every over intake saw I have, um, you tend to have to turn up the idle, kind of like a drag car or a race car, friends. Um, if you've ever seen something with a super, super lumpy cam, um, they tend to need a little bit of a, a, a higher idle etc etc and the other thing is friends when you have a saw that's really over intake it can be really hard to get the snap out of it the crack we call it uh when you pull the trigger and crack is like one of the most important things um in a work saw to most of the guys that i know because they do a lot of limbing and when you're limbing you want a saw that's like boom super responsive like a good race car or you know, a really high tuned thousand cc sport bike. Um, you want it to go bing, bing, you know, like zing right now, right up to full RPM with a touch of a trigger, like the Iron Horse 372. That's how that thing runs. Um, so what am I going to do about that, friends? Well, I pondered it and uh, I think I know what we can do. Also, friends, I don't only want to do builds that you guys can't recreate. Not everybody has a lathe. In fact, friends, I'm going to say most of you guys don't have a lathe. Post a comment. Do you have a lathe? I've had a lathe for 10, 11 years, friends. Um, but I, I realize most people don't have lathes. When you have a lathe, uh, you could just put things in your lathe and modify them. When you don't have a lathe, you're like, well, what do I do? So here's what we can do, friends. Because the piston crown is so much taller on a 272 piston, we can raise the cylinder up, can't we? Okay, but remember, we can only raise the cylinder as high as the exhaust port will let us because 
If I raise the cylinder too high, we will free port, okay, meaning the piston skirt will clear the bottom of the exhaust port. We'll free port on the upstroke. We don't want that. Um, not for a work saw. Uh, for a race saw, yeah, you could probably get away with it, but not for a work saw, okay? Also, if I raise the cylinder, my intake port gets higher. Maybe I can bring that timing back to a happy number. So, I'm going to take the same cylinder again. It timed with 25 thou squish and a 20 thousandths base gasket, which is what I used for the last mock-up you guys saw. We got 99 on the exhaust, so 99 degrees after top dead center. Transfers were 124-ish, 125. Wasn't happy with that. That's a little too much blowdown. Um, close to what I'm looking for. Okay, so we had 26 degrees of blowdown. The intake was 81 before top dead center and 81 after top dead center. So 81 plus 81 is 162 degrees. Um, not what I'm looking for. So without further ado, let's do some work tonight. I bought this Felpro sheet of gasket. Um, I have various, various rolls of gasket. I make gaskets all the time, friends. If, uh, Working on the real vintage stuff, sometimes you need to make gaskets, and sometimes I just don't want to wait. I'll just fire out a gasket real quick. Um, this stuff, this is number, this is number 3025, and uh, this is 16th of an inch, which is like 62 or 63 thousandths gasket, okay? Let's trace this, and I'll show you guys how to make a gasket. Let's trace that that OEM or, you know, aftermarket 20 thou gasket. Let's cut a gasket out for this. Let's let's jack the cylinder up. Maybe we can fit a full height pop-up in there with no machine work. And then let's time it. Maybe our numbers are better. Also, when we're done that and we time it, let's talk about the benefits of actually having your wrist pin lower, right? Okay, friends, when you have a taller piston, there are some benefits to that. Let's talk about it. Okay, let's make a gasket. Okay guys, I got our highway gasket and this piece of Felpro gasket. It's a little curvy, but we're gonna we're gonna use it. And yes, I cut myself, friends. You never know I'm a sheet metal worker. I always cut myself. My mom uh, my mom laughs. When I was a kid, I used to whittle sticks and I'd always cut myself. And then I became a sheet metal worker, and any of you sheet metal workers know out there, that's just part of the job. Okay, all I'm gonna do. Hold this real good with my fingers and cut this out. Now, the drawback to this heavier material, it, maybe it blows out. I don't know, friends. We're going to find out. Basically, I want you guys to be able to recreate this build because I think this build's going to be rowdy. Why not? If I do my job as a porter, this, this build should be good. Okay, I'm keeping it all nice and lined up here. Okay, tracing this. First thing I'm going to do is punch my holes. Okay, there we go. Just showing you guys our results. And then I'll just trace around it. Probably better to use a marker for this. I have a table full of markers, but I picked this here. Wolf Creek Saw Shop pen. <laughs> you guys know me. I'm just having fun. Oh, we missed a spot or two. Okay, I'll just trace this out. Okay, and if you don't have a set of these, you should get them. These are old. They got a little rusty over the winter. I guess they got wet. But hole punches. can sharpen them. Just find one that's about the right size and give her... I put this piece of cardboard down so I don't uh, so I don't dull this thing. Right, that should be good. Again, line it up over the hole. This one. I do stuff like this all the time, friends. And again, I may I may find a smaller hole punch. Or grind one to the size I want. If I decide these holes are too big, but we're not gonna know if this is viable. 
until we literally jack up the cylinder. Okay, and this stuff's really thick. Growing up and, you know, working on working on bikes and stuff before the internet, I mean, this is what I did because living in an unpopulated area like I do, there's, you know, if you need a gasket on a weekend or something, you're, you're just making it. So I've been making gaskets my whole life pretty much because, you know, this whole internet thing where you can just hit buy it now and, you know, in Canada, a week later, or whatever, you have a gasket delivered. Um, that, that was a foreign idea. The internet's really changed our lives, hasn't it? Okay, I'm just going to grab my knife. Again, keeping my thumb away from the travel. I have to tell myself that because, again, friends, sheet metal worker. <laughs> Never know that I'm going to cut myself till I do, right? I'm just kidding, friends. I'm... Uh, I've had some serious lacerations in the trades, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten smarter. Uh, I think the worst one I ever had, um, a fitting slipped, and I don't know, you can just see it there, friends. See that line? I cut the side off this hand all the way. I peeled this back. Still numb to the touch, too. <laughs> the doctor there, he, uh, he sold me back together. He was a good feller. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay, we'll make this gasket. I'm just going to cut this out as quickly as I can because I want to see if this works. Again, we can always make another gasket. This stuff's pretty tough. I'm sure it'll last. I'm not super worried about it blowing out, but again, that's always a concern. You guys know me. I usually do gasket deletes. But because we're always learning on this channel, <laughs> let's make a gasket and make a big gasket for a saw. Because again, friends, I don't want my saw over intake. I have some over intake saws and I don't run them very often. Not because they don't run, they do. And you might not know any different, but the more saws you build and the more saws you run, and I mean, I'm lucky, I'm always running different saws and, you know, um, I didn't know at the beginning that an over intake saw wasn't the best deal. But now I, I go, yeah, they... They definitely don't idle as good, and they're not as quick on the trigger. They're just not. And I never, I never thought about it, but it's like, of course they are, because you're you're losing some vacuum. And remember, friends, the the designers, they know what they're doing, and yeah, they're working in a set of parameters. And I mean, the factories could build saws that run like this, but here's the thing: they have to be mass produced, and. If you can make a 372 cut like a 390, then there's no reason for a 390 and onwards and upwards, right? The old adage is if you need more power, get a bigger saw. But to me, I don't want a heavier saw. I want a lighter saw with more power. That's just the way I roll. Okay, friends. Here's our gasket. How long did that take? Pretty simple. And let's bolt it down. I'll zero our degree wheel. Get you guys set up. And... Let's have a look at the intake timing predominantly. And does the piston hit? Do we have the right squish now? Um, let's use the same piston as we were. Let's use a Meteor. We can also use a Highway if you guys want. Um, either or. It doesn't matter to me. But uh, let's see. I don't think on this build I'm inclined to put a pop-up in. We can talk about that after. So let's time the flat top to start. Just to show you guys there's no funny stuff going on. That's a Meteor piston out of this box okay and the same highway cylinder the one with the blue dot on it that we timed last time okay and i'll put this gasket down let's just see what does this get us maybe maybe it gets us wonderful things or maybe we go oh that's no good and maybe i can put the gasket on the right way how about that <laughs> good times i don't know what it is but these uh these 372 gaskets, I always put them on wrong. You guys get the idea, though. Again, this was built quick and easy. I just want to jack this thing up. I'll get it bolted down and zeroed, and let's have a look at the numbers. Okay, and just to show you guys, one direction, it stops at 65. It should stop in the same spot on the other side. 65 and 65. I have a piston stop in here. Okay. Now, if you're stopping your piston, it'll stop wherever it stops. Just make sure it stops in the same place and your wheel is zeroed. 
Okay, now the next question. Do, do I get a full rotation? Does it hit? Well, would you look at that? This thing doesn't hit at all, does it? Get a full rotation. There's top dead center. Okay, now the next thing to look for, and I'm going to try and get this on video. Do we have free porting on the exhaust port? Is there a gap there? No, there isn't. Okay. You would see a gap at the bottom of the piston there. Okay. This is all stuff you got to think of when you're doing stuff like this. Okay, so we're good there. So let's time this thing and see where it lines up. Okay, and this is how I time pistons. I take my little scope here. Stick it in the spark plug hole. And then... We look for the first ray of light. Okay, now, sorry guys. Okay, top dead center. See that light shining through there? Right there. Okay, that's how I time them, first ray of light. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Now I'll set you guys up on the wheel. As the first ray of light opens, I'll call it and you guys figure out what the timing number is. Okay, I got you guys zoomed in on the wheel, bottom dead center, top dead center. I'm going to put this scope back in. I re-zeroed it because I bumped my timing pointer, so I re-zeroed it. Things going to open somewhere around 100 degrees here. Looks like it opens right about, right about there. 102 after top dead center. Well, that's fine. Now, we move the cylinder up, right? We're, we're opening at 102, so I'm going to say 126-ish these transfers should open. Now, I'm just going to look through the spark plug hole, and I just look for when the transfers open. Right about there. I will reconfirm with a ring. Okay, just because the exhaust moved down a couple degrees doesn't mean... Right, just because the exhaust is opening a couple degrees later doesn't mean that the transfers are, because it depends on where in the stroke you are. Transfers, 125. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. You guys can see that on the wheel, 125. Okay, so 102, 125. So, we have 23 degrees of blowdown. I'm happy with that. Exhaust is at 102. I'll probably put it at 100, 101, somewhere around there. Okay. Now, I'll set you guys up. Let's look at this intake, because that's what we did all this for. I was happy with the other numbers before. And then we'll measure the squish, and then let's see if this is viable. Okay, here's our intake port. Opened, closed, okay? So, we'll say it opens right there. I'll pause you guys and show you guys the wheel now. Now, would you look at that? That's telling me I'm at... 77 and a half, 78, somewhere in there. So 77 times 2 is 154, 78 is 156. That's the kind of timing I want to see in this saw. Um, 160's pushing it. Now let's check the squish because we're sitting here and we're having fun. This is a build you guys can do. Let's check the squish. Okay, friends, I got my solder in here. Let's turn this motor over. Okay, let's turn this motor over and see what we got. Let's hope this squish is somewhere between 20 and 30 thousandths. If it is, we don't have to do any machine work. And then we can just port this thing and throw it together. Okay, that's the second or third time I've done it. There we go, there's our solder. It looks like it's going to be in the ballpark. Get my calipers here, zero. Okay, let's measure that. 30 thousandths. Okay, so we're gonna call it 30 thousandths. Woohoo, we did it. Let's talk about this. Okay, friends, I love when a plan comes together. I think this is going to work. Is The only thing that I'm not sure about is, is this gasket going to hold up? 
Um, this stuff's really rigid and really strong. Like, it's hard to pull apart. Um, I think it'll be okay. Felpro's make, Felpro makes good gaskets, so I think we're going to rock this. Again, to do an overview, number one thing, if you don't have a lathe, is your squish too skinny. Too tall, it is what it is, friends. Try running it, and you'll probably find out your saw runs just fine. Okay, so squish 20 to 30 thousand is what I was going for. I'm at 30. It is what it is, friends. Um, free porting on the exhaust port. Again, if your piston over travels the floor of your exhaust port, guess what? That intake's open. It's sucking air in. All that air you sucked in wants to go somewhere. And where does it go? Some of it will leak out of the exhaust port. Not the worst thing in the world, but for work saw, you probably want to stay away from that. Again, to each their own. I don't like free porting, unless I have to. Um, and then again, intake timing. Well, we're at like 156 now. That's right in the ballpark of what I wanted. So I'm happy with that. Um, transfer timing's fine. And our exhaust is at 102. So I can leave it at 102. I can move it up a degree or two. Um, sky's the limit. And even friends, if I'm worried about compression, I can put a pop-up in this. Now, something I don't think I've ever discussed on this channel, my thoughts on piston swaps. Now remember, it's not, it's not that the dimensions of this piston are that much different, right? Or this piston, because that's the one I cut. Top to bottom, these pistons are almost the same height. It's where the wrist pin is located, okay? The 272 is more top heavy. The 372 is more central. Okay. Part of the reason why a 372, they have good longevity. They last year after year is the wrist pins in the center. Um, when your wrist pin gets lower and I've, I, I've noticed this on saws and I've always thought of it this way. When your wrist pin gets lower, um, it changes where the forces are on the piston. And I find a lot of, a lot of newer saws. And I'm not going to mention brands because uh, <laughs> some people will probably uh, flame me for that. But there's some brands that tend to move their their uh, wrist pin. And, it, and it's a lot of brands, friends. Uh, it's just the way they do things now. You end up with your wrist pin too low and you end up uh, with a lot of intake skirt wear. I've noticed that on certain saws that I've ripped apart. And uh, so again... By putting a shorter skirt in this saw, we may end up with more skirt wear. So I'm going to have to be aware of what I do to the intake port because if I make it too wide, well, guess what? I'm going to end up wearing this skirt really quickly, which isn't good for a work saw. The other thing though, friends, think about it. If you have a taller piston from the top of your wrist pin to the top of your piston, what does that do to compression? Think about it. Um... That might be why I'm not super concerned with squishing this saw or even thinking about putting a pop-up in it. I could. I may put a pop-up into this, friends, but I honestly don't think it's necessary. So, anyhow, there you guys go. That's a highway cylinder, um, a highway 272 piston or meteor. They're the same dimension. You can buy one or the other and slap them in. Or again, you could do the same build with the original piston. Um, but again, I wanted to go light piston. I'm kind of on the light piston kick lately, and this seemed like the perfect build to do that with. So, uh, off the shelf highway piston, meteor or highway, um, meteor or highway piston, and uh, off the shelf 52 millimeter big bore cylinder. And uh, I almost got confused there, friends, didn't I? But I, I'm going to do it. We're going to end this video very soon. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that out. Friends, it's late. And uh, sometimes I just fly out here and shoot videos. Because it's like I, I enjoy hanging out with you guys. And showing you guys what I'm doing. So anyways, there you guys go. You could recreate this. Uh, the number of this. I believe this is this is Felpro 3025. It's 16 of an inch gasket. Uh, very thick. They make it all the way from like 10 thou all the way up. So I'm sure you guys can find this stuff. Uh, it's measured in fractions, but just convert that to inches and you'll get your measurement. Anyhow, I'm excited. I can't wait to get this thing ground on. Coming up uh, this weekend and next week, friends, 
I really want to get Caleb's 288 going or set away. I'm having oiler problems with that. I think I know what it actually is, friends. I think it's actually the tank vent is clogged. So we're going to look at that. Um, I put an OEM oiler in that and it didn't fix anything. It oils for like a minute. The minute you put it in the wood, it runs out of oil and it goes on. But what I notice, friends, is when you pull the cap, it goes shunk, which tells me that uh, that oil tank is under pressure or vacuum. I think it's actually under vacuum. So anyways, that's coming up. We'll do the grinding on this. And friends, I want to get back out to the bush and cut some more trees down. But I kind of want to do it with this build. So that's kind of where we're at. And uh, I'm excited. It's springtime. The weather's nice. And I can't wait to go out and cut with some sauce. Anyhow, friends. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Stay tuned for the question of the day. It's question of the day time. I love this segment. Keep sending me your questions. Uh, I've grabbed a few from comments. Most of them have come through emails, but keep posting and, and sending your questions and I'll keep trying to answer them. Um, a few of them have stumped me and I've had to make some phone calls and uh, maybe in the future we'll have to do a phone a friend option. Be like, hey, Iron Horse, <laughs> what do you know? Um, Anyways, today's question of the day is from Kim Bird. Kim has a Husqvarna 359, good old fashioned firewood saw. Lots of those around here with no spark. Kim has changed the coil three times, still no spark. So Kim asked a specific question, but I'm gonna go over all the things I'd look at. Number one, spark plug. And I know that's silly, but I've done it in the past where you think you got a bad coil and you got a bad spark plug. So I had a new spark plug once that lost spark. Change the coil, no spark. Change the plug, suddenly I have spark. So first thing, check the spark plug or change it with a known good one. Uh, unplug your wires from your kill switch. Sometimes you have a bad kill switch that's shorting out or you have a bad wire that's grounding out which of course kills your coil. Thirdly, and Kim touched on this in the email, could you have a bad flywheel? And the uh, answer to that is 100% yes. Um, some flywheels, the magnets can get weak. Sometimes they, uh, I've heard guys tell me sometimes they can reverse polarity or lose polarity. So um, sometimes if they've been smacked with a hammer and stuff like that, it can actually cause them to lose polarity. So you might have a weak magnet or bad magnets on that flywheel. Um, if they're clean and the contacts look good, you've tried coils, you probably got a bad flywheel, unfortunately. Hope that helps. Anyhow, I gotta go inside, it's late. Later, thanks for being here.